comment, like, and subscribe, or you will never see Maxine again. Alright? No, I'm just kidding. I would never do that to you guys. But, like, low-key, it's a threat. Hi everyone! Welcome back to the Strawberry Loli channel! I wonder if YouTube is going to shadow ban this video because of my shirt. I guess we'll find out. Alright, so as you may have gathered from the title, today I'm going to be doing another decluttered, empties, and panned video. Um, yeah, so my hair is super greasy and gross. Let's just get that out of the way. I'm on day two of no shampoo no hair washing after my hairline microblading experience. I honestly don't know how I'm going to survive for another, like until the end of the week basically, before I get a chance to wash my hair again, but it is what it is. This might very well be the last video I managed to eke out while looking semi-decent before I have to like take a hiatus until I can wash my hair again. I mean, who knows? Anything could happen. Depending on my mood, I could do a little voiceover situation if I felt like it, but anyway, before we get into my recent empties and panned items and all of that, I just want to gently, maybe not so gently, remind you guys. I hate to be this person, but I want to remind you guys if you enjoy my videos and my channel and you want to support me so that I can keep making these videos, I would really, really appreciate it if you could like the video, subscribe, comment anything really even if it's just to say hi like any type of engagement seriously would help me so much again I don't want to be this person or dwell on this subject for too long but I just noticed that like recently my most recent videos have not been getting that much views or engagement I know you guys are out there I know I have a lot of silent viewers silent supporters out there but I mean I don't really know how else to say this that doesn't really help me Engagement is truly the currency that we go by on YouTube. It's especially important for small fish creators such as myself who already have such a hard time promoting our content and getting it noticed in the big algorithm. So yeah, just a strong suggestion and reminder, you know, at the end of the day, I can't tell you what to do, obviously, and I don't have a right to expect anything from you, but if we're gonna go by that logic, it goes both ways, right? People who watch my content and benefit from the research and work that I put in, they are also not entitled to me just working myself to the bone for little to no recognition. So without further ado, let's just get into these used up, dried up products that are so yesterday. I have them all in this container right here in no particular order. I'm just going to stick my hand in the pot and the first thing I pull out... Whoa, okay. Didn't know we were going to start with that. So this is the Clinique Even Better Radical Dark Slot um, Corrector Serum, I guess. I got this at a Clinique party, Clinique launch release party last year, February of 2020, so it's been over a year by now. And thank you, by the way, for Vivi Meg, who invited me to be her plus one at that event. Yeah, you know, I did my best with this one. To be honest, I don't like Clinique... I don't like Clinique's... Skincare. Oh my god. Um, I forgot the word skincare. I don't like Clinique's skincare products on the whole because I just don't like the way they smell. They just smell weird and plasticky to me. I don't think it's pleasant and it, it smells like they're always on the verge of going bad. So I tried to write it out with this one but to be quite honest with you, I didn't notice any type of difference or improvement in my skin tone after using this anyway. Not to say that I had like super discolored skin or super pronounced dark spots to begin with so that might also be a reason like maybe I didn't have the issues that this was targeting to correct in the first place but I tried my best and then at some point I just could not do it anymore there's a little bit left it's like I don't know if you can see inside the bottle I would say it's maybe up to here I listen I'm, I'm over it it's been over a year I think we can call it quits with this one okay next I actually finished a perfume you guys granted it's a mini size but this is the classic Marc Jacobs Daisy perfume the original scent I think Daisy and the Chloe perfume are the ones that I run into most frequently in Tokyo. I do still like it, but I don't know if I would repurchase this because it's been... This was actually bought for me by my mom like several, several years ago when I was visiting her in New Jersey. Yeah, it feels extra good because I was able to finish something given to me by my mom. So now I actually have no fragrances on hand because a couple of months back I actually finished my main fragrance which is Gucci Rush 2. That's like my default. Um, I love that scent. The only 
complaint I have about that one is that it's not that strong. No matter how much I spray, it disappears really, really quickly. I just wish that they could revamp that formula if there was a way to make it the exact same scent, but two times or four times more potent, that would be perfect. They're not going to do it though, because honestly, no one... I feel like no one else is really checking for that perfume except for me. I don't know when I'm going to buy another perfume, you guys, honestly, because it's not a necessity. I mean, nothing on this channel is, but it just feels like extra unnecessary to be buying fragrance at a time like this. You know what I mean? If anyone wants to gift it to me, though, that would be more than appreciated. I do have it in my Amazon wish list, which will be linked below. Next item. Oh, Be Idol Lipsticks. I don't know what happened with these, honestly. I loved them so much at first. I was pretty much obsessed, like, using them every single day. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but I kind of liked that from a moisture locking perspective. I felt like it, it kept my lips moisturized throughout the day, and I really liked the scent that they had. There's different scents for different shades. Like, this one is grapefruit, and this one is something else. I don't know, like, at some point, I just got sick of them and never pick them up again. The whole wearing a mask 24-7 thing also doesn't help. So yeah, I think it's time to get rid of these. As much as I still do think it's a good product, I just grew out of it, I guess. My Lash Tubing Mascara by Opera. This is amazing on the bottom lashes in particular. It's like my third tube. I already have a new one open that I'm using right now. Um, this mascara does tend to go bad a little bit on the quicker side compared to some other mascaras I've tried. When I say go bad, I mean it starts to get a funky smell, it starts to clump up pretty rapidly, but the fact that I use this almost every single day makes that a non-issue for me. If this was a mascara that I only reached for once in a while, it wouldn't be worth it to me to keep it in rotation, but since this is pretty much my go-to holy grail for every day, I'm going to continue using this for as long as it works for me. Another item that I've gone through countless tubes of. This is the Melty Cream Lip in Matcha Flavor by Mentholatum, which is produced by Roto, which is not cruelty-free actually, according to Java, which is really sad. I do have like two more in stock, so I'm going to use up what I have on hand, obviously, but yeah, the fact that Roto is not cruelty-free... Damn it, man. That's a real bummer. I don't know what to say about that. And I know it's not the last case of one of my faves turning out to be produced by a brand that's not cruelty-free. It's really, really unfortunate. I have to put a sticky note in this one. Can makes Mermaid Gel UV in 02. This one has like a brightening tint to it. I was originally thinking of cutting this open, but then I didn't feel like it because you know when you cut open bottles, the scissors get dirty too, so you have to clean the scissors too. Like, the amount that you would be able to scrape off of the insides of the container is not enough to offset, I don't know, the water and soap and napkin expenses that you would need to clean your scissors. Am I the only one that thinks this way? I feel like I overthink things, but no, seriously though, I think I did a really good job of squeezing out every last drop of this. Like, I, I literally, basically like a toothpaste tube, see? I folded it in as much as possible and you see there's nothing coming out so we can say goodbye to that i will definitely somewhere down the line i'm i can see myself buying another bottle but for now i want to use up just like my regular old sunscreen that i have still two bottles lying around this one actually the sun bears cool plus sunscreen with 50 SPF plus. Yeah, I just don't want to buy anything new until I use this up. Plus, um, I will say the one really disappointing con about the Can Make Mermaid Gel UV for me. Mermaid Skin Gel UV, sorry. These names are so long. It has a weird smell. I really, I'm not a fan of the smell. And I'm not like completely crazy about how it feels on the skin. It does come off a bit oily. It's not intolerable by any means. And I think for the effect that it gives you, it's worth it to deal with a little bit of discomfort. But in terms of comfort, this one definitely takes the price. Although that makes sense because this is not a makeup base or anything. It's just a pure sunscreen. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to just using regular sunscreen because I like the cooling effect. I like the minty smell that this has. And it also doesn't leave my skin feeling greasy at all. So that means I can also reapply several times during the day if I need to. And I can do that these days because I don't know if you remember me mentioning in previous videos, but I'm really not wearing 
that much foundation these days if any at all um i might put on like a dot of concealer here or there you know to cover to just even things out but as far as a full face of foundation i can't remember the last time i did that who has time for that in 2021 seriously new mightia eye drops in their cool formula this is a staple that i always need to have in my purse because i wear contact lenses pretty much every single day and my eyes get really dry although i don't think it's necessarily my eyes fault it's the fact that i'm always on and off trains and you know when you go through certain stations there's like narrow roads that create a wind tunnel situation so in turn the wind is just blowing in your eyes and drying up everything that's the daily tokyo i struggle basically this next item i really thought that i got rid of this in like a previous declutter but i guess not this is the sauna excel eyebrow mascara n in bm03 i ran out of my you are glam eyebrow mascara so i think i just started using this one because it was the only one it was the only other one i had on hand i don't think it's particularly good to be honest with you and i think a lot of that has to do with the shape of the wand it's pretty ineffectual on my lashes at least i much prefer a fatter wand that I much prefer like a fatter, shorter wand because that way I find it can grip onto your individual eyelash hairs easier. So for example, what I'm using right now, I just went out and bought this the other day actually after I ran out of the Excel brow mascara. This is the one by Cezanne. Um, I pretty much only picked this because it was like the cheapest option in the drugstore. And my Daiso doesn't have the You Are Glam one that I liked, so I decided to go for this option instead. And I'm really glad I did because it's actually working out great. I have it on my eyebrows right now. This is what I've been wearing for the past week. And it's just, yeah, the color matches great, but it comes down to the wand. Honestly, in my opinion, it comes down to the shape of the wand. And this one is really like the perfect shape and thickness to grab onto your individual eyelashes. Uh, not eyelashes eyebrows so i might have found a keeper with this one okay moving along so i actually managed to pan so many items this might be like the most items i've panned all at once in a video super exciting um this is the majolica majorca form remaker in natural brown this was a hand-me-down from vv meg but it is my second time owning this product so this is my everyday bronzer bronzer of choice well up until i ordered the charlotte tilbury bronzer which i have sitting in front of me right now i have not tested it out yet but it did come fairly quickly from beautylish um yeah up until i got that one this is the only one that i've been effing with in my collection i am confident that i could get by with this as a bronzer slash contour powder for the rest of my life it's just the perfect natural shade. Let's just do all the panned items at once then, since I already got started. So this one I showed in my last panned video, the Etuse Face Edition Powder. This was already panned in my last video, but it's even more panned now, you see? Yeah, that's actually not a lot of product left. I should be able to use up this entire pan. Exciting. Do you ever feel like it takes like 500 years to first hit pan on a product but then once you do the remaining amount of the product goes by in like two weeks it's like a weird physics law or something and then this one is probably the most exciting i have not one but two panned rmk items so these are both from the beige library collection which you can check out my extensive comprehensive review here if you haven't already um this is the blush duo in number two wondrous that's the highlighter portion so apparently i panned in the shape of the state of new jersey or something i don't know um yeah the way that this powder breaks down i'm not the huge fan of to be honest with you like if you look closely you can see that it has weird it has a weird crater like moon surface like texture that's just the way that the product breaks down it has a tendency to like bunch together in weird spots kind of annoying but what are you gonna do and then this one is their eyeshadow duo in 01 spring sparkle so this one has a cream eyeshadow and topper shade which you guessed it i panned the topper shade i really worked hard for this pan though i'm not even gonna lie i was like digging into this pan every single day but even so i didn't expect it to happen this quickly so that was 
a pleasant surprise. I understand some people may consider me to be crazy or ridiculous for buying out every single new RMK release, but you can't say that I don't use up the items, okay? In fact, probably the majority of empties and panned items that I've managed to achieve as if they're an achievement from my collection is from RMK. So you can't say it's going to waste. We have the Cezanne Eyelash Essence X. I used this up as much as I could. I don't think... Um, yeah, there's still a little bit of essence left, but it's kind of coagulated and gotten really gloopy. So I think it's time to toss it. I don't know if I'm going to repurchase that eyelash serum in particular or if I want to try something new. I noticed that my eyelashes actually fell out at a pretty fast rate whenever I was using the Cezanne serum because they would just keep growing back in like weeds. So in that sense, I guess it was effective, but then I, I didn't really see much of a length increase. So I don't know if that's even controllable with whatever certain ingredients are in certain serums. Like, is there a way to control for a formula to make to focus on making the length of your eyelashes longer or is it more like it can only make you grow more lashes do you know what i'm saying like are those two different things that require different types of stimulation these are answers that we deserve to know in the international beauty community i'm just saying um then i have the d up eyelash fixer x this is the best and strongest eyelash glue i've ever used again i'm i've lost count of how many tubes i'm on i use this almost every single day as well you can see a running theme in all the products that I've shown here today. And then finally, this one makes me like slightly sad that I wasn't able to finish it completely. See, I only have this tiny bit left. Um, the Opera Lip Tint N in 07 Baby Pink. I do actually really like this color against my natural lip color. You wouldn't think so because it looks like a pastel pink, but it's like semi-sheer, so once it mixes with my natural lip color, Something about it just, it works. It's a nice little neutral everyday moment for me, but it, this is just, I've had it for so long and it's just gross and melting. You see, there's even discoloration over here. I think it's time to just let it go. Yeah, I haven't reached for this one in months either. All right, so that is all I have for you today. I'm actually kind of surprised and like proud of myself for making so much progress on using up so much of my makeup still even though i've cut back in major areas such as foundation and like actual lipsticks colored lipsticks um yeah i'm still using up a lot of my products which feels really good i still beat my face every day i mean just because we have to wear masks doesn't mean i have to lower my standards so pretty much that's what the situation is let me know how you're doing on your makeup usage or project pans whatever you have going on whatever personal goals you have you know let me know in the comments Nothing is too insignificant for you to share with me. On that note, I hope you are all having a wonderful day wherever you are, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!